All right, let's look at a couple more inverses and finish up section 2a. So I'm going to find the inverse and graph um, f of x equals 3x minus 6. So I'm going to get the graph ready. Um, go ahead and graph 3x minus 6 using its linear, so use those properties, slope and y-intercept. Um, if you want to make a table, you can. Um, I'm going to just use slope and y-intercept to go a little faster. So I'm going to start at negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 0, negative 6, right? And we're going to go up 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. And that should be enough to draw a straight line. Close enough. So that's um, f of x equals 3x minus 6. So let's find the inverse. So we're going to start with y equals 3x minus 6. And then we learn that the inverse just meant switch them. So x equals 3y minus 6. All right, we switch x and y. And then we just solve for y. So plus 6 plus 6. x plus 6 equals 3y. Divide by 3. Divide everything by 3. So we get y is 1 third x plus 2. Or if you want to use inverse notation, f inverse of x is 1 third x plus 2. So let's graph this one now. So I'm going to start at 2, or 0, 2. And then slope tells me to go down uh, up 1 over 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. And then, let's see. Yeah. It should be close to straight. It's not perfectly straight. But if you have a ID or something or a credit card, use that to make it straight. And we see this nice weird reflection. So if we actually draw the diagonal, which is y equals x, you see this nice reflection. So this will be true for all inverses. So the graph of f and f inverse will always make this nice reflective property about y equals x. And that's because if a, b is a point on the one-to-one -one function, right, f of a equals b, then f inverse of b equals a. Oops. Yeah, a. So essentially, a, b will be on the regular graph, b, a will be on the inverse. So let's show you on my example. So 0, negative 6 was on my original function. And if you drew your line straight enough, you'll see negative 6, 0 is on the inverse. Um, you'll see 0, 2 was on the inverse. And if your graph is nice and straight, you'll see that 2, 0 is on the original. Right? They're opposites of each other, which is really what an inverse is. right? x and y are being switched. So let's look at more examples. So anytime we draw an inverse, um, a, b is on my original, b, a is on the inverse. Um, if you want some actual numbers to help make sense of this, let's say this is 3, 0, right? There's no number line, so I don't know. Then this one would have to be 0, 3. Does that make sense? Um, let's say this is, I'm just picking arbitrary numbers to get practice. Let's say this is 4, 5, right? Then 5, 4 would have to be on the original, right? Because x and y are getting switched. So that is the idea of an inverse. So let's look at x cubed. Um, we know what x cubed looks like on a graph. We've seen that one lots and lots of times. Right. But what would the inverse look like? So we have y equals x cubed. We're going to switch. So we get x equals y cubed. And we just solve um, this by doing a 1 third power. And so this is a cube root. Those cancel out. y is equal to x to the 1 third power. That's my inverse. And then we could try to graph it. It's a little hard to see the reflection. So one thing I really like to do is just make tables. So let's find some points. Let's find some points on x cubed. So we have 0, 1, and 2, and 3, why not? Um, this is on x cubed. And then we'll jump to the cube root. 
So this is just a help graph if you don't, if you're struggling with the reflective property. So what do we get? We get zero, we get one, right? Um, two cubed would be eight, so that would be way over here. And then three cubed would be 27, which is maybe like way up there. So what does this tell me about the inverse? Basically tells me we have the opposites. So if you're not very good at cube roots, we don't really need to know anything. We just switch the two columns. So that's a really nice property about inverses. Notice it's the exact same graph table, but X and Y are opposite. So that'll allow us to get a couple points and help us graph. So zero, zero, one, one. So those two match. And then eight, two, oh, sorry about that. Eight, two would be way over here. And then 27, three would probably be way over here. So it's basically making the same shape, but sideways. And then the bottom will do the same. You could add more points to see that. But we're making, right, it has this nice reflection about y equals x. But one thing I really like to do is the tables, right? The x and the y column just switch. And so that helps us really understand inverses. And now we can graph an x to the one third graph, which maybe we couldn't do before. Cool, so just a couple more examples. Um, let's see if we can find um, f inverse of negative one half without ever finding the inverse. So let's say f inverse of one half, let's just say it equals a to just pick an arbitrary number. So I didn't wanna pick x or y and confuse anyone. Um, I just picked a, it's arbitrary. So it means one half a is a point on the inverse meaning a one half would be on the f of x. So what if I plug this into f of x and solve for a? So we'll say f of a equals one half. So two, again, a is arbitrary, you didn't have to use a, you could have used x. Oops, it was negative one half after all this. Right, always good to double check. So 2 over a cubed plus 4 equals half. So let's solve this. So I'm going to start off by cross multiplying. And then we will simplify. So I get negative 2 times 2. So I get negative 4. Negative can go on either side. Just pair it with one of them. And then equals a cubed plus 4. And then I'm gonna subtract four. Oops, yeah, subtract four. So a cubed is negative eight, or eight, negative eight is a cubed. And then this is an odd power, so this is allowed. So we just do a cube root or a one third power, whichever you remember. So one third, one third. Um, if you don't know this, it's also the same as a cube root. So basically what number to the third power gives me eight? And that would be, 2 gives me 8, so negative 2 gives me negative 8. So a is negative 8. Negative 2, sorry. 8 is the output, a is negative 2. So that means f inverse of negative 2, negative 1 half, is equal to negative 2. So we'll have negative 1 half, negative 2 on the inverse, and we have 2 Negative, negative two, negative two. Right? So we just were so, we used the regular function to find the x value, and then we didn't have to go through all the trouble of finding the inverse.